How about that? The Hillbilly Jam by Ben Deneen, Gold Coast-based, ultra-talented musician and ultra-trail runner. Thank you for that contribution, Ben Deneen. Now, this is a bit of a different episode of the Physical Performance Show. This is the first of our 2022 Summer Series episodes. That's right. The Physical Performance Show headquarters is on vacation, but we are still bringing you some highs, lows, and specifically some learnings with our Summer Series. Today's episode is lovingly brought to you by Polar's world-leading GPS watches and heart rate monitors. If you are in the market for a new multi-sport watch, look no further than the stunning Vantage V2, Polar's most formidable multi-sport watch to date. I'm Brad Beer, sports and exercise physiotherapist and exercise scientist by trade and training and founder of Pogo Physio. Each week, we'll bring you the latest and greatest information and inspiration designed to help you perform at your physical best. And during this, our first Summer Series episode, you'll enjoy some extracts from our July 2020 first live stream event with the forefather of polarised training, Dr. Stephen Seiler. At the time, Dr. Seiler delivered a bucket load of learnings to hundreds of people in the endurance sporting world worldwide, coaches, athletes, practitioners, around the topic of his live stream, Sustainable Training for Attainable Endurance Goals. Now, this live stream is still available in the live stream back catalogue. You can jump over to at physicalperformanceshow.com, our brand new website, or it's also available for our Patreon supporters as a gift. And here's an extract where Dr. Seiler explains why sustainability in training is so important and why it's paramount that we must not forget to manage the total stress response and all the factors that contribute to that in our lives. It's a reminder to not forget about intensity control and to control our natural instinct, which tends to be to go harder even on our easier days. You know, this is where the rubber meets the road is that we're trying to uh, generate these adaptations adaptations in the brain, adaptations in the nervous system, you might say, adaptations of the heart and the cardiovascular system, and then, of course, the adaptations at the muscular level. Uh, And it's a two-edged sword because the same stimuli that is going to turn on molecular signals, it's also going to turn on stress responses, uh, whether it's uh, bone tendon stress, you know, and muscle damage, Uh, the repetitive autonomic nervous system stress load, uh, immunosuppression, uh, um, inflammatory responses, and so forth. We're learning that inflammatory responses can get out of control. They can kill you. Cytokine storms are one of the key killers of the COVID-19 response. The body can go overboard on some of its protective responses, and that includes inflammation. And inflammation happens, for example, with endurance training. So these are these are all issues, and, and we're trying to uh, we're, we're hobby molecular biologists as coaches, be, even though we don't maybe know it, because we're trying to move that fulcrum a little bit in different directions to try to get the balance right between stimulus and stress, and make it sustainable. And we're back to that words, so, you know, is this sustainable? And so the question then becomes for me, so why so much green zone? It, you know, how, why is it that we see so consistently that really successful athletes are doing a lot of training that seems like they could go harder and maybe become more efficient in the sense of using less time at a lot and get more uh, stimuli at a higher intensity. And 
my current <laughs> 20 year summation of the answer to that uh, seems is, is here that number one on the, in, uh, on the signal side, intensity is not the only component of the stimuli. It's really important to understand that at the molecular level, it's intensity times duration. There is a, if you think in, in math terms, it's an area under the curve you're trying to generate. Uh, you're trying to find the right combination. So intensity is just a one dimensional variable. It only has meaning when you add the duration component. Uh, and that's a really important kind of fundamental to, to, for us to have our heads around as coaches and athletes is that, uh, you know, 90% of VO2 max means nothing unless until I attach a time to it. How long am I there? How, how many accumulated minutes am I at 90% or at 65%? That's when it begins to have meaning as an adaptive signal. Now, another issue is energy availability. We know that the relative utilization of our different energy sources, fats, carbohydrates, and so forth, change with intensity. And it, it may well be that one of the sustainability issues is just this daily glycogen load or glycogen demand. And it may be that part of the sustainability issue is, is achieving uh, or, or using a lower intensity that generates a signal without hitting against a glycogen limitation every day. And then the third component is just the stress load management, is systemic stress load. How are we managing that uh, and the different components of that stress load? And, and those components vary depending on the sport. For example, running the ballistic load, the muscle tendon load, is higher than it would be for swimming or for cycling. Uh, whereas with cycling, because we're able to do these longer rides, these longer sessions, we may be seeing a different autonomic system stress load because we are uh, driving the autonomic nervous system for longer periods often with our six hour training sessions in as, as cyclists. So, so there are some differences, but there's an overall stress management issue that we have to attend to. And, and that ends up being the basic, my basic way of looking at sustainable training is, is I'm trying to, every time I plan a training week or, or 10 day cycle for my daughter, it's this, it's signal stress and trying to get that balance right for her, or help her to get it right through our communication and through her execution of the training, uh, training um, prescription. And here's, I, I love this picture because I think it just summarizes in, a, in an interesting way the realities of training and competition. And that is, is that, you know, obviously the key stress we're thinking about is the actual stress of the physiological demand of cycling for five hours or doing the seven, eight, nine hour triathlon or whatever. But there are a bunch of other stress components that can add up to a breakdown situation. And, you know, when we look at, say, a, a grand tour, the athletes do fine and then they, they fall. They get some, some bruises and, and scrub sores or a scrub, you know, these injuries, these abrasions, which in isolation are not catastrophic, but they tip the athlete over the edge from a, a total stress load situation. And often this will result in a capitulation two or three days later because now they're not sleeping, they're not recovering, and they just say, no more, I'm done, I'm out. And so th this is kind of a, an encapsulation of what happens to us as, as normal age groupers that have jobs and have, uh, you know, other sources of stress is we have to remember that the brain and the body kind of the, the, the total stress load is, is one big pot. The, the stress responses, whether it's because of lack of sleep or because of, uh, uh, concern over a job or a training load often they go through some some 
uh, common pathways. So we have to manage the total stress and be cognizant of that. When we're working with age group at our school athletes, we have to think, you know, if they're in a period of heavy school load, heavy exam load, that actually ends up impacting their physiological responses to the training. So, uh, you know, I'll end with this, or at least on this particular talk is, you know, when you, when you have your athlete or you yourself and you've made a decision, today is an extended, extensive day, it's a green zone day, are you going to be true to that when you hit this hill, when you're jogging along and the hill comes? This is one of those fundamental behavioral decisions that we see that high performance athletes are good at intensity discipline, at toning down the intensity as they run up that hill because today is a low intensity day. Are you going to be able to control your instinct, the instinct I have every time some cyclist passes me on the road or on Zwift, I instinctively want to say, uh-uh, I'm on your, on your tail. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, well, this half wheeling has destructive effects on our overall long-term training if we don't keep it under control. So this is, you know, intensity discipline is part physiology, but it's a whole lot psychology. And, and I'll leave you with that on this first uh, session. Further on in the live stream event, Dr. Seiler discussed the importance of being flexible when it comes to our training programs. Here you will hear Dr. Seiler outline what happens when a perfect training plan meets the biological realities and why Dr. Seiler finds it so difficult to forecast more than 10 days ahead in training his distance running daughter. The problem is, is that perfect training plans, the idea of that if we structure everything, then we push the button in, in essence, and just execute the training plan that everything's going to work. Well, the problem is, is those perfect training plans meet a biological reality that is very different from building a house or a garage uh, or adding a, you know, remodeling your kitchen because there are some complexities that are not present. There's a difference between complex and complicated. And one of the things that you meet when you coach is that this happens. Uh, stuff happens and people fall down. They get hurt. Speed skaters, I used to work with speed skaters. A speed skater falls and gets a concussion two months before the Olympic trials. Well, that just kind of throws a monkey wrench in the works of your well thought out training plan. And then you got to adapt on the fly. And the other thing that happens, even if none of this happens, even if no major catastrophes happen, no infections, broken bones, or crashes, you just have these issues, which are these so-called butterfly effects or small things that have big consequences over time, sometimes unforeseen, that make the planning process much more challenging than we would like it to be. Because the, the training process that worked last year, for some reason, is giving a different outcome this year. What has changed? It's not always easy to understand. Um, I recently listened to this lecture by Tim Palmer. He's a mathematics professor. I'm not a mathematics expert, but I was interested in this issue of, of, of planning, of periodization, and prediction. And he you know, and I read the book Chaos way back when I was a doctoral student. And yeah, it was a life changing experience for me to think about things in a different way. But he was explaining here why it is that despite the incredible computational power that we have, the incredible degree of uh, processing power we have, we still, for example, cannot predict the weather with any kind of accuracy at the local level beyond about 10 days out. No matter how sophisticated you, you work with the models, the degree of refinement that you achieve with successive layers of complexity or complication in the details just gives less and less of a benefit in your predictive value. And so we're stuck with this. Well, let me, what struck me as a sports scientist was that that's not that different of a number. If I try to say, well, if I'm planning the training for my daughter 
and everything's going well, how far into the future can I predict and plan very precisely which workouts I want her to do? And I end up basically in the same situation is that I, you know, a 10 day cycle is kind of about where I am. I, I will sometimes plan two 10 day or nine day cycles we use, uh, but that's about as far in front as we go uh, because experience shows that things are going to happen, that, that small details will require that we make adjustments. And so there's not a whole lot of val added value to very detailed planning beyond that, that window. So it's not that different from predicting the weather. Even though I don't have a supercomputer, super I'm dealing with some of the same issues of complexity and butterfly effects as a coach. And that is just a reality. And so uh, this guy, uh, Rick Nason, he wrote this book, It's Not Complicated, where he, he kind of tries to distinguish between complicated processes, which are have lots of moving parts, but they are uh, predictable. They, they do not have feedback loops and so forth that cause them to spin out of control versus complexity, which is where you have unforeseen consequences from small changes. And, and to be honest, coaching is complex. It's managing complexity. And so he presents this kind of uh, the prayer, <laughs> kind of an adaption of the, of the serenity prayer. And he says, give me the serenity to accept the things that cannot be calculated the courage to calculate the things that can and the wisdom to know the difference. And I think this is going to resonate for us when we start to think about things like, you know, measuring training load and how we quantify different things. And some of our algorithms that we put our faith in is, is to what extent those calculations are um, valid, but we'll get back to that. Now, if you're facing some of this, stuff on the left side, the shit, and you're also dealing with butterfly effects, what, is your, what are your tools? Well, your tools then are that you have to communicate. You have to use this interaction. Uh, and personally, I always, people ask me, can you coach me? And I say, well, no, I don't have time, number one. And number two, uh, I don't think I could do justice to the coaching process as a purely digital experience because I find that coaching still, we still benefit from looking each other in the eyes. We still benefit from seeing the athlete and talking and getting that emotion, emotive, those responses to try to understand how they are doing. So communication still matters. And, and that helps us to deal with some of this complexity and some of the unfortunate stuff that happens. And we have to revise. We have to realize that those coaching plans are going to be constantly under revision. And that's part of the art of this science that we, there is still art there. There is still uh, a, a degree of intuition and a gestalt uh, process that so far uh, the science is not replaced. And I'm a scientist and I'm just telling you that, that we don't have the scientific data to make this process uh, foolproof uh, or artificially intelligence driven. So your jobs as coaches, they're not very highly paid, but they're still safe in the sense that uh, <laughs> we, we can't replace you with just pure data. Uh, the data is not good enough. Support for today's show comes from Polar. The team at Polar want to wish everyone a very happy new year and a great start to your pursuit of your physical best in 2022. Polar have the experience, insight and history of quality design and innovation which is unparalleled, worn by some of the planet's best athletes. If you're feeling like you need to get back and beat your best, then it may be time to upgrade your multi-sport GPS watch. You can check out the incredible features of Polar's multi-sport watches like Polar Flow, Training Load Pro, Run and Bike Test, so you can nail your VO2 Max and Power Training alongside Nightly Recharge and Recovery Load Pro features by jumping over to polar.com. Polar's unique features are designed to help you absorb and make the most of your training and come back even stronger. And who 
doesn't want that in 2022. So check out Polar's brand new Military Grid X Pro, one of the toughest watches out there, built from military-grade sapphire glass with ultra-long battery, alongside the new Vantage V2, and my personal favourite, the Vantage V2 Shift, one of the lightest and most formidable multi-sport watches on the market. So jump over to polar.com and come back stronger in 2022 with your new GPS watch. And during the fourth module that Dr. Siler presented during the live stream, titled Essentials for Training, Monitoring and Testing for Sustainable Training and Long-Term Development, Dr. Siler introduced us to the Endurance Training Monitoring Trinity, or what he defined as the Holy Trinity of Physiology. My grandfather was a preacher, so obviously there's some religious connotations here, but I don't want to get too religious but I do think that the Trinity has value in the sense that it's also in the, in the idea of government, which is that this idea of checks and balances, that if you just measure one thing, such as power or pace, and there are those who prescribe that, who say, look, all I need to measure is power. If I know my power zones, then I got all I need. Well, I'm sorry, but that, that's not true because Power is the result of, pace is the result of the physiology that you're trying to manipulate with your training. So it is not the cause, it's an effect. I want to also know physiological responses and I want to know perceptual responses because the brain ultimately controls all of this and the brain is the canary in the coal mine, the, the perceptions of effort. Those are the first that tend to change when it starts going sideways uh, in the training process. So the trinity for me of monitoring is these three in concert. I want to know the external loads that are being executed, that are being successfully achieved. That is part of the developmental data that I need. But I also, in the day-to-day process, I want to know some physiological responses. Heart rate is kind of our window, our easiest, most accessible window into that physiological machinery. Uh, it's not perfect. It, there are caveats. There are issues that you need to be clear about, but it is an important window. And then occasionally we may also use blood lactate. We may occasionally also bring people into the laboratory, although I think you can produce gold medal winners without a laboratory. Uh, don't get me wrong. We've done it. It's been done by, you know, in many places. But some measurements of physiology are important. And then that perceptual effort, uh, you know, my if it's my daughter, she just, she just uses her prose in her training diary. She doesn't necessarily use a lot of numbers. I like some numbers, uh, but she is touchy-feely based and, and that's fine. She's listening to her body well, and then I try to translate what she says perceptually to some of the physiology, and it gives a, a, a checks and balances system that works. You know, in, in government, it's supposed to be this way too. Unfortunately, it tends to fall apart uh, in, in, in some governments with the wrong leaders. But we won't say more about that. The, the idea of this trinity it works in a lot of places and it works in training uh, that if you, if you use all three, not necessarily every day, but all three over time, they will correct each other. They will help explain each other in a way that I believe will give you a better overall picture. So as always, whenever Dr. Stephen Silent graces the physical performance show, there are learnings galore. I hope you enjoyed that mini episode, the first of our summer series focused on physiology. Today's episode is brought to you by Precision Fuel and Hydration, who have a range of tools and products to help you personalize your fueling and hydration strategy so that you can perform at your best. Longtime listeners of the Physical Performance Show will know Precision Hydration, but they've changed their name to reflect the fact that they've been helping athletes nail both aspects of their performance for a long time now. Everyone sweats differently and the amount of fuel we require varies depending on factors like the duration and intensity of our activity. 
So a one size fits all approach to fueling and hydration just doesn't cut it. Head to precisionfuelandhydration.com and use their free online sweat test and quick carb calculator to understand your fluid, electrolyte and carbohydrate needs during training and racing. Then book a free one-to-one video consultation with the team to refine your hydration and fueling strategy for your next race. As a listener of the show, you can receive 15% off your first order of fueling and hydration products by using the code capital TPPS22 at the checkout at precisionfuelandhydration.com. That's TPPS22 at precisionfuelandhydration.com. Support for today's show also comes from Amp Human. Amp Human and Momentus, building the future of human performance. Amp Human, the creators of PR Lotion and Momentus, the cleanest, safest sports nutrition company, are merging together to build the future of human performance. PR Lotion is designed to maximize your training and recovery by unlocking Bicarb, a natural electrolyte that improves muscle function and helps you combat fatigue during hard workouts. PR Lotion is used by some of the world's greatest endurance athletes, including Lucy Charles Barclay, current world 70.3 Ironman triathlon champion, and Ineos Grenadier professional cyclist Cameron Wirth. Train, compete, repeat with Amp Human PR Lotion. The Amp Human team have generously offered up 25% off when you buy your Amp Human PR Lotion from the Amp Human brand store over at bikeexchange.com. Simply use the coupon code TPPS25 at checkout. That's TPPS25. Get your hands on Amp Human's PR lotion. This show simply would not be possible without our show partners and sponsors. So thank you, Polar Precision Hydration and Amp Human for making this summer series possible. Now, if you've enjoyed extracts from Dr. Stephen Siler's live stream, Sustainable Training for Attainable Endurance Goals, sourced from our archives, then the full three-hour live stream and PDFs from the presentation are still available over at physicalperformanceshow.com from just $49 Australian per person. If you'd like to receive complimentary access to the live stream, consider becoming a patron of the show. Jump over to Patreon, search The Physical Performance Show, and there you can pledge your support from just $5 US per month and receive receive access to our entire back catalogue and upcoming live stream events. Now get set for next week's Summer Series Part 2 instalment where you can enjoy some learnings from world-acclaimed recovery expert, former guest of the Physical Performance Show and host of our former live stream event, Recovery Essentials for Optimal Performance, Dr. Shona Halson. With this new calendar year, get set to up your recovery game. Until next week, keep pursuing your physical best performance. I'm Brad Beer and this has been the Physical Performance Show's Summer Series Part 1.